Well, good evening, everyone. BWE, this is Dr. Delaney Michelle Elliott. Excited to be on the call tonight. Get my camera right here. <laughs> hello, hello, the queen. Make sure I'm coming through clear. How are you, darling? Awesome, awesome. We'll give it a few minutes and let everybody join. Hello, Sheila. Good evening. Hope everyone is having a wonderful week. It has been an awesome, awesome week for me. So I'm very excited. But this is BWE. This is our Monday night ministerial staff. I want to say hello to all of my sisters. Good evening, Candace. Thank you for joining. Good evening, Verdina. <laughs> We're going to have a wonderful time tonight in Bible study, and uh, I'm very, very excited about you being a part of the study tonight, and make sure, I know I got a little glare on my glasses here, sorry about that. Clara, thank you for joining. Fonseil, thank you. Hello, hello. Hello, Lorencia. That's right, send me those likes and those hearts. I'm getting my hair, I just came from in from out the wind. <laughs> Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for all the love. Thank you so much. Well, this is, um, hi, Malia. Thank you for joining. Sharon, I see that you're on. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. <laughs> well, I tell you, we have a busy household because my husband, um, Dr. Leon Elliott, is on uh, on a call with some young men platinum businessman and he's uh he's doing some coaching tonight and uh so monday nights are really busy for us <laughs> so we like to encourage people so hi madeline gail how are you good good wow pennsylvania awesome awesome i see gail is from north carolina as well well you guys know i'm in charlotte and uh i tie candy thank you for joining karen patricia all right. <laughs> well, I tell you, I hope you guys got your pen out, that your your iPads, whatever you're going to be taking notes with tonight. Hi, Virginia. Thank you for the love. <laughs> um, by the, um, I'm sorry, I'm giving some instructions here. Um, right by the, uh, the bottom of the door, bottom of the, of the thing, the foot of the bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's getting ready for his class tonight. So I'm getting him straight. I got to do the wife thing, right? <laughs> well, I hope that you're excited tonight. I hope that you are um, with all the love and the likes and the hearts. Thank you so much. I'm very, very excited. I have um, a powerful teaching tonight that we're going to do in the word of God. Jersey's in the house. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about the courage to become a financially savvy woman, the courage to become. Hi, my sister Roberta, Miss Tony, the her, the teach the anointed teacher, woman of God. Hi, Delta Bakes, Melinda. Thank you from Louisiana. Wow, this is awesome, Madeline. Thank you, thank you. Well, we're going to talk about the courage to become a financially savvy woman. And um, I, I'm very, very passionate about this topic because um, I saw my mother um, as a single woman raising two girls become a financially savvy woman. I saw her manage her her affairs. And, and Dr. Um, King and I talk about this all the time, you know, um, just in, in her testimony, you know, um, as as a as a um, a single mom and and raising her children to successful you know careers that they have, and um, and she's a powerful grandmother. Dr. Dr. King is my girl, and 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 just what it means to be a financially savvy woman, you know, what it means to manage your affairs, what it means to to walk in the kingdom authority as a woman of God. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I honor you and I thank you. 
God, you are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are the King of Kings, hallelujah, and the Lord of Lords. You gave us this authority. You gave us the right to be called the children of God. You blessed us with your power and your love. You loved us. You love us to the degree that we can be confident. You said never cast away your confidence. So we thank you, O oh God, that we can be confident in you. We thank you, O oh Lord, that as black women empowered, Father, that, that you have anointed us to, to be gracious. You anointed us to be to be savvy. You anointed us to be saved. Holy women of God. Hallelujah. But we're not ashamed of our holiness. Hallelujah. We're not ashamed of, of walking in righteousness. We're not ashamed of taking the principles of God literal and, and putting it into our lives and making it a part of, of our everyday life. We thank you, O oh God, for, for the power. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for, for the anointing. For the, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the chains. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that helps us live this life every day. And so, Father, I, I pray right now for your daughters that are, that are with us tonight. They're, 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 uh, Lord, they're, they're watching from all over the country. They're watching, oh, Lord, from outside the country. And I thank you, O oh God, that I decrease now and I allow you to increase in me by your spirit. I thank you, O oh God, that you have given me this wonderful opportunity on this Monday night to teach your daughters. I don't take that for granted at all. It's a privilege to me. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a desire of mine to teach the word of God. And so I thank you, Lord. Not only, not only do I get to teach the word, but you allow me, O oh Lord, to teach it in the field of my expertise. You allow me to teach it in, in the financial realm. That's the, that's, the, that's the realm that you anointed me in, and I thank you for that. I thank you, O oh God, that, that, again, that these are your daughters, and we're going to have a good time in the word, and I'm so excited about being with them tonight. So, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I hope that you are ready. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hi, Karen. How are you? <laughs> Good seeing you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I tell you what, again, it's an honor for me to be here with you tonight. And we're going to talk about the courage to become a financially savvy woman. What does it mean? What is courage? Let's talk about that. Courage. The quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear. I'm going to say that again. Courage, the quality of mind or spirit. Amen, Pauline. Thank you. The quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear. Bravery, obsolete, the heart as the source of emotion, have the courage of one's conviction to act in accordance with one's beliefs, especially in spite of criticism. Amen? So, so when I say the courage to become a financially savvy woman, why do I, why do I put financial savvy, hi Hubert, and, 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 and courage in the same sentence. Because in today's economy, in today's society, um, I've got some, st some statistics and things for you guys, but, but the, te the definition of courage, again, is that mental or moral strength to venture, to persevere, withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. And so right now, we're living in a time where, where um, things may be difficult. Things may be a little tight. Things may be, um, uh, there's chaos going on right now. But, but how many of you know that we live above the chaos? Amen. We have peace in the storm because of who we serve. We have peace in the storm because it says the quality of mind or spirit. See, when Jesus says, that we are to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. He said that through, through the apostle Paul, be, re, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What he's saying is, is that we, there's a mindset. There's a mindset 
that we have to renew ourselves to when it comes to the things of God. So we want to make sure that that we have the quality of mind or spirit that's enabling us to face this difficulty. The quality of mind or spirit that enables us to walk in the in, in the danger, to walk in whatever's going on in, in our life and in our circumstance, that we have the quality of mind. And you say, Dr. D, you sure saying mind a lot. Yes, because one thing that we want to make sure is that we are thinking. Saints of God, we need to think. Amen. We need to have our minds wrapped around what God says about what he says. <laughs> Amen. What, and so tonight we're going to talk about being financially savvy. Okay. So what does God say? What's happening? What's happening? So before I get there, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Maya Angelou said this, when it comes to you and your money, as young women, you will need courage. She said, courage to dispel the current myths, okay? She said this, she said, without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. She said, um, we can't be kind, true, merciful, generous, or honest. So she said, without courage, you can't practice any other virtue with consistency. Why? Because fear will cause you to, to, to not be kind. When you're afraid of something, you know, a lot of times fear will cause us to lash out. Fear will cause us to lie because you get in a situation where, where you, if you, if telling the truth is going to, is going to um, cause you not to be able to, you know, to, to make the right decision, then, then you're going to lie about it. Say it and all. When you're fearful, fear causes you to make crazy decisions. Fear causes you not to be yourself. It causes you not to be merciful. It causes you not to be generous. Because when you're fearful of something, you're gonna hoard it. You're gonna you're gonna cheat. You know, you're, you're gonna hold it tight. You're not gonna you're not gonna be generous. Fear causes you not to be honest. You you again because when you are fearful, sometimes it's easier to lie than it is to tell the truth. Amen. So that's why she said that without courage. You cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. Amen. Listen to this. A recent article in CNBC, um, this was, matter of fact, this was our uh, year 2013. Median earnings for women working full time, listen to this, ladies, were about 78% of those for men, according to the Census Bureau. A narrowing of just two percentage points in a in a decade. The median earnings for women working full time were seventy eight percent of those of men. In other words, the men are making over twenty percent more doing the same job. Uh, you know, hey, uh, this is not politics. This is what's going on in our society. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about society here. Given that women live longer and have lower incomes in retirement, Chang argues that they must rely even more heavily on savings than men do. But research shows women actually set aside less money for retirement than men do. So we're going to live longer, but we're saving less. And so that means that when we're out here working and we're working and we're working, we're making 20% less, we're living longer and we're saving less. Something, something's wrong with this picture. Okay. This is society. All right. Given that women live longer and have lower incomes in retirement change. This is, this is the part of her CNBC report argues that, that must, that, that they must rely even more heavily on savings than men do. But research shows that women actually set aside less money for retirement. A BlackRock survey of 4,000 American investors released earlier that this year found that 53% of women have started savings for retirement compared to 65% of men. And among those who started saving money, women had accumulated less than half the amount that men did. Women saved up to 34900 
But the men in the same age group, the same salary, you know, uh, uh, as far as the jobs that they were working in that same category, while the women were saving 34000 the men had saved 76000 Come on now. They are more likely to be single parents. To talk about the women, they're more likely to be single parents and have more people to support on their incomes and the cost of childcare, Medicare, college have all risen rapidly in the recent years. This is the CNBC report. Come on. Younger women who are graduated from college and graduate school in higher numbers than men. So we're getting educated. You're getting your degrees and, the, and, and are, are also shouldering, listen to this, more of the student debt. Why? Because you're the ones getting educated. You're the ones going for your doctorates and your masters. Hallelujah. And researchers have noted that they're earning less than their male colleagues, a combination which can hurt the ability to build wealth. In her research, Chang found that single women have only 32% of wealth for every dollar owned by single men. From the traditional economic model, single women should look exactly like men, Chang said. The fact that they don't is really telling. That makes it exceedingly important that women continue to build wealth. Let's write that down. Women continue to build wealth. Setting savings aside and contributing to a retirement plan even as they pay down debts, says advisors. And you say, Dr. Delana, I thought this was Bible study. Not, not a financial report. <laughs> Hallelujah. But even among high-earning women, come on now, even among high-earning women, many seem reluctant to take an active role in managing their money and building their savings. Sometimes it's a lack of time to focus, they say. Women are very busy, we say. We're dealing with children and aging parents and careers, says Ann Copeland, head of the private wealth management for Regions Wealth Management Group, which recently launched a women and wealth program to expand its focus on women. So now you got corporate America building and launching women and wealth programs. Come on. I hope you guys are listening. Why are they doing that? Because it, they, they lack confidence women lack confidence when it comes to their money so so even corporate america is launching women and wealth programs in a recent report released late august what do bread winner women want <laughs> authors eileen o'connor co-founder and manager of the principal Hem hemington wealth management in tyson virginia and heather edinger a managing partner of fairpoint asset management in cleveland compiled data from surveys with 1074 breadwinner women how many breadwinning women do i have here tonight amen how many of you are breadwinning women glory to god Hallelujah. They found that even among the breadwinners who currently work with the financial advisor, 62% felt that they are not as knowledgeable about their finances as they would like to be. And nearly one in five said that they are not knowledgeable at all. Hallelujah. Another 38% admitted to feeling that they are, that they and or their partner were leaving money or benefits on the table. Okay. <laughs> enough is enough. And without sounding religious, okay, this is Bible study, so I get to quote scriptures, right? This is this. This is this is this is this is my prayer. This is why I do what I do. A wealthy woman builds her relationship with God. She embraces his presence in her life. Let's turn to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Get Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to say, therefore, I urge you, my sisters, 
by the mercies of God, present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, setting apart. That's what that's what it, that's what it means to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with their superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. How? By the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. This is the amplified version. So that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Society says that as women, we earn less, you save less, you, you think less about money, et cetera, et cetera. But ladies, to become financially savvy women, you must first decide that you are not the average woman. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I wanted to get to tonight. That's why I gave you the statistics. That's why I told you what the what the what the um what the the wealth managers were saying and 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 all the data that's out there on the regular women, the average women. Hallelujah. But 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 Romans 12 and 1 and 2 says that we are not to be conformed to this world. Hallelujah. I don't care what the statistics say. Amen. I don't care what, what, what the, all the data that they have out there. Glory to God. That's right, Sharon. Glory to God. We are not average women. So therefore, we will not find ourselves locked into those statistics. We're not going to be making 38% in our income less than men. Hallelujah. We're not going to be the ones saving $34,000 and, and to, to the tune and, and the man is saving $74,000. No, we're going to think about what God has called us. Hallelujah. He said that, that, that he gives us the power to get the wealth. That he tells us in Proverbs to consider the ant and the ant saves in the winter, prepares, uh, saves in the summer to prepare for the winter. We have the word of God. We don't have to be a statistic. Amen. We are not that woman. That woman that they wrote about, that's 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 those other women. Amen. Those are the women that we're going to go out and get. Those are the women that we're going to go and reach for Christ. Those are the women that we're going to let her know, baby, you don't have to be underpaid either. Amen. Because God said we can ask for what we want and it shall be given. We can seek and we can find the job, the career, the business, the opportunity that we want. We can knock on the door and it will open the door of opportunity. Why? Because Christ is the door. So wherever he is, there is nothing that's not open unto you because Christ is your door. So if there's a, if there's a glass ceiling, put Christ on there. And he's the door to go through the through the glass ceiling, amen. If there's if there's a if there's a um, a limit on the pay on the job, then put Christ on the put Christ on it because He's the door, amen. There is nothing that you cannot have, be, or become when Christ is your door. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't matter what's going on in society. It doesn't matter what's going on in the data. That's why I read it to you first, because I wanted, I wanted you to know that this is the other woman. Hallelujah. That's the woman that doesn't know Christ yet. That's the woman that doesn't have the information that, that you have yet. That's the other woman. That's the woman that you're going to go get and let her know that she doesn't have to be a statistic either. We're not going to leave any woman behind. Amen. We're going to go, go out there and we're going to get her to let her know that she can be a black woman empowered that this is the, the information that we get. This is, the, this is what we do because we are the daughters of God, most high. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen, amen. Glory to God. This is exciting. This is why we do what we do. This is why we do what we do. Society says that, that, that women earn less. Society says, data say that you save less. Data says that you think less. But guess what? That's the other woman. That's not you. Hallelujah. Because you don't belong to society. <laughs> While citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Glory to God. We come from the fourth dimension, not the third dimension. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Glory to his holy name. Thank you, Lord. He says, and don't be conformed to the world any longer with this superficial value. Those are superficial values. 
We don't, that's why we cannot conform. I know sometimes it's easier to conform. You don't want to stand out. You, you don't want to be religious. You don't want to, you don't want to look, you know, strange. You, you know, you, you, you want to, you, no, we are peculiar people. We are a holy nation. Amen. Peculiar people. Why? Because we can save our money. Because we have life insurance. Because we have investments. We, 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 you know, we, we do what we need to do to make, to earn more than we spend. Hallelujah. Why? Because our minds are renewed to the word of God. We don't live by society. We do not conform. Conformity says this. You get up in the morning. You put your clothes on, you shower, you do it all that. And, and, and you get up and you go to work and, and you do everything that everybody else does. You don't know why you're doing it. Earl Nightingale says you don't know why. But, but because everybody else it's following this robotic, you know, life. Then everybody else, just one after the other. I think the Beatles had a song, you know, I'm, I'm getting my age here. The Beatles had a song that says that, you know, little houses, little houses. And, and they all made out of ticky tacky, little houses, little houses. And they all look just the same. That's conformity. He says, don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed. Hallelujah. How many of you grew up with transformers? Amen. Michael Bay brought it to the, brought it to the modern day. Amen. So we can see those transformers. And, and, they, and they, they, you know, they, they start off as a car or a truck or a bicycle or airplane or whatever. But when it's time to transform, what happens? Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> Amen. And then they, and they, they're, they're, they're an alien being from, you know, from another planet. Transform. Don't be like the world. Don't conform to, to these statistics that I read. That's why I wanted to take the time to read it because I want you to see yourself different than this. Hallelujah. We are financially savvy women. Financially savvy just means that we know what the word of God says about our life. He says that I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. So that's why we have, a, we have to be the, the word of God. We got to know what the word of God says. We have to be thinkers, not conformists. I don't do it just because the preacher said to do it. I don't do it because the pastor said. I don't do it because my boss says. I don't do it, I don't do it just because, you know, the TV says that's the, that's the culture of the day. I want to know what the word of God says. And if he tells me to be transformed by the renewing of my mind that means that they and, and i talked about that earlier courage says the quality of mind and spirit that enables a person to face difficulty danger pain etc without fear i'm telling you ladies it takes courage it takes courage to to stand and look at a situation and see something different it takes courage to stand and and look at a, a report like i just read and say that's not me or if it is me, now that I know, I can do something different about it. Because the woman of God says that I, I can learn, I can read, I can trust God. And not only, because the scriptures tells us, don't just be a hearer of the word. That's conformity. If you're going to church every week, if you're going to Bible study every week, and you're, you're, you're in the line to park, you're in line, you're going to the bookstore, you go, y'all know your Sunday morning routine, and you're doing that every week, but your life is not changing, you are conforming. Even in the area of attending church, you can be a conformist. What I want you to do is to be a transformist. I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Even though you're doing the routine, don't, don't let God become a routine. Am I making sense? I want you to see what God says about you and your wealth. I want you to read Deuteronomy chapter eight. I don't have time to go there tonight because I wanted to get I wanted to get these these statistics uh, statistics <laughs> to you. I'm still from the country, y'all. Okay, um, I had to slow down, get my words right. But but I wanted you to hear what the society says about women. And I wanted you to, I wanted you to hear that. And then I wanted, I wanted something to, to stir up inside of you and say, no, that ain't me. I got the Holy Ghost. That, that, that's not me. I'm a daughter of God. I wanted to, I wanted to rattle you. I want, I wanted that thing to stir up in you and say, wait a minute. No, 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 no. 
I'm going to do something different because I am something different. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me read this. Let me, let me, let me, let's talk about imagination. Cause, cause Ephesians 3.20 says, you know, that, that, um, uh, that he's able, right, to do more exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So he says, imagine, imagine. When's the last time you imagined? When, when's the last time that you had and used your imagination? Amen? Let, let's, let's go back to, to using our imagination. When you are in that's what meditation is, right? Meditation is imagining. It is 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 having your time with God. It's is 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 seeing the word become flesh in your life. It's seeing the word become real, activating the word of God. That that's all it, that's all meditation is. Meditation is the ability to actually see the 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 word of God come to fruition. What does it look like when you read the scripture that says that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think? Do you do you actually put something in your mind at that time when you when you hear that scripture or when you read that scripture and you imagine what can be done that's above and exceeding what you're asking or thinking? Do, do you spend time in actually seeing what you what you're currently asking and thinking? God doing more than that. What does it look like? That's imagination. The, he, he wants you. That's, that's being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind comes from God. It's okay to use it. <laughs> I give you permission to use your mind to become a financially savvy woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grow your mind, grow your thinking, grow, grow in your mind. And I promise you the rest will follow. Hallelujah. Think about this as, as I wrap up tonight. Think about, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead. I, I'm, y'all give me like 10 more minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to keep you long. Just 10 more minutes. I got some things I want you to write now. <laughs> Look at this. The key to being a financially savvy woman. There's some things I need you to do. Write in big letters, pay myself first. Write that down. Pay myself first. And you say, what is that? Okay, what does that mean? Beginning your, on your next paycheck and everyone after it. I want you to take 10% off the top of your net earnings and put it in the savings. I want you to take 10% of your net earnings and put it into a savings account. Pay yourself first. And I know, I already know, I already heard it. I already heard it. But Delaney, you got to pay your tithes first. You got to pay your tithes first. I'm talking about doing with the 90 percent <laughs> okay those of you that pay tithes i'm not even talking about tithe that that that's like breathing okay that that's I, that might be considered what i'm talking about is is when you get your check the consciousness of paying yourself first take the 10 percent if you made $100 this week, I want you to take $10 and put it in a savings account. If you don't have a savings account, I want you to go to the credit union and I want you to open up a $5 savings account. Those of you that are military or, or, or have been military, you can do USAA, Naval Federal Credit Union, whatever credit union you have in your city. I want you to open up a savings account. Today is the last day of April. It's the 30th of the month. Right, it's the April 30th, so it's easy to remember. April 30th, I know it's, I know, you know, like here it's already, it's already 10 o'clock. So May 1st, if you don't have a savings account, I want you to go open up a savings account. 
your next check, I want you to take 10% of that check and I want you to put it in that new savings account. Okay? That's 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 your that's that's um your first um assignment. <laughs> okay? Number two, ten percent must go into investments, preferably a safe one. Okay. I don't know how many of you have life insurance. Dr. King and I talked about that. Um, we want to make sure that black women are powered, that everybody has life insurance. Y'all know that's, that's what I do. If you want any questions, if you got some questions answered, if you need life insurance, I want you to call me. I'm at 704-421-5701. Call me. I'll talk you through it. Okay. But I want to make sure that you have your life insurance. Number number three. Actually, this is like I said. This is uh, I said ten percent going to charity of your choice, or those of you who tithe, then you know you do that first because that's 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 your practice. Okay, those of you that is not tithing, what I want you to do is I want you to grab a charity. We got you know we have um, our our, our uh, charity here with black um, black women empowered. We take care of the veterans, so take ten percent. Get with Dr. King, amen, and and let that let that be your charity. Let's let's help these women, you know, these women veterans. Ten percent, okay. So what you're gonna do? So there's three things. You're gonna tithe if that's your practice. You're gonna put ten percent in a savings account, amen. And then you're gonna get you're gonna get life insurance. You're gonna make sure that somebody can bury you. You're gonna make sure that you're not leaving not leaving any debt for the next generation. Amen. You're gonna be a good steward of God's money. And we're gonna walk you through that process. What does that do? That gives you a, a, a practice, that gives you a consciousness of wealth. When you when you make those, when you make those um decisions when you make those financial decisions and you make a practice when you go open up the savings account you know um um and, and or, or or start using the savings account that's maybe tied to your checking account but you have a certain amount of money every time you get paid that you are determined that's going to go over there then it changes the way you think about money it i'm telling you if you if you if you just listen if you trust me i've been doing this for 30 years okay I done paid off cars. I, I, I done, I done sold homes. I, you know, we, we built a new home in 2015 here in Charlotte. You know, um, I'm managing, you know, I mean, um, God is just, God is just blessing us. This is just an area of anointing. When, when I do, when I do teaching and when I do ministry, all my girlfriends, they want to, they want me to take up the offering. Why? Because I have anointing for money and, 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 and God just allows the people to give because they trust the information. They trust the energy. They trust the anointing you know, that I have when it comes to relaxing, when it comes to allowing God to speak to your spirit, when it comes to getting that financial breakthrough. I do not want you to be one of those women that every time there's a conference, every time there's a church service, every time you're going to, to hear a, a, a preacher or, or if you just want to enjoy a, a good, you know, teaching or a girl's night out or going to a conference, when they stand and say, does anybody need a financial breakthrough? I don't want you in that line. I don't want you in that line. I don't want you, I don't want you raising your hand. That's me. I want you to live a life where you don't need a financial breakthrough. Why? Because you are financially savvy. You are saving. You are spending less than what you earn. Your debts are under control. You have your investments. You own a home. Amen. You are you are paying for you are paying a car or paying it off. Matter of fact, you got two or three cars that just paid off that you can give somebody a car. You may even have a beach house that you don't that you only go to on during the summer that somebody can live in, you know, that needs that needs some place to stay. You are not raising your hand. I don't want you in another line. I don't want you giving no hundred dollars to another prophet. Because you want a financial breakthrough. We're going to break that in the mighty name of Jesus. I feel that so strong in my spirit right now. That's not you anymore. Amen. Because you're going to go through Proverbs. 
and you're going to walk you're going to walk through the principles of proverbs and you're going to handle your money you're going to not stick your head in the sand you're going to you're going to get your bank account you're going to look at your checks you're going to look at your atm you're going to read what's coming in and what's going out you're going to look at your bills with your bill pay whatever you're going to do. you're not going to wing it financially anymore you're going to know exactly where you are and if you're under then we'll start there that's where you're going to give me a call said delana girl I'm jacked up right now financially, but if, but if you walk me through it, we're going to get you through it. That's what black women empower. That's why we're here. We're not here just to, just to teach and, to, and, 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 and get likes and views and, and, and all that, and then you stay the same. When Jesus walked the earth, when they came to him, when they cried out, thy son of David, have mercy on me. When they wanted to be healed, he healed them when they were lame they walked if they were blind they saw if they were deaf they heard the woman with the issue of blood her blood flow dried up the, the, the when jerry's daughter was dead when jesus went to see her she got up hallelujah we are here because we want your life to change. If you are in a situation where you need uh, a healing or if you need a job or if you want to start a business or if you want your marriage to work or if you're single and you're looking for relationships, whatever it is, whatever we're teaching, because each one of us teachers on Monday night have a different anointing. We have the same Holy Ghost, but we each are anointed in different areas. And if you would listen, if you're a consistent listener, if you're, if you're a consistent listener, thank you. I'll give you my phone number right, right after I say this. If you're a consistent listener of, 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 of these Monday night teachings and Tuesdays and, and, and black men empowered and the prophets and the bishops that are here, wherever there is lack in your life, when you connect with us and the anointing that we have, Mine is finance, relationships, women empowerment. Finance, relationships, women empowerment. That, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm wrapped up in. When I wake up in the morning, I've got, I've got, my, I've got some of my, you know, my mentee saying, give me, give me my, my, give me me. I had one of my, um, one of my students, she texted me this morning. She said, give me my, the, the mind of Christ affirmation. I, te I text her the mind of Christ affirmation. She said it three times and the Lord blessed her today in a business meeting. She said, this is the first time I've ever talked in any of my business meetings. And they let me have 10 minutes and she works for one of the largest hotels uh, in, in downtown Atlanta. God is moving. His word is true. His people are real. And we're here because we love you. My number again is 704-421-5701. Again, that's 704-421-5701. That's my cell number. I, I, I keep it on me all the time. I'm here for you. Dr. King knows that. We love you. We're excited for you. Um, you know, you can email us. Make sure that you email us because God is blessing. He's moving. Thank you. You know, yes, he, he is. He's doing it. He's, he's doing it. We're different. We're not the statistics. Hallelujah. What does, what does it do? When you put yourself first, it causes a mental shift in your beliefs and your prioritization. This new attitude will cause you to make smarter decisions. You become a student of money. You will increase your level of awareness and you will attract all the good that you expect in your life. It takes courage. You may stand alone, even in your own house. But you must be determined that you will not be a statistic as we discussed earlier. You are not that woman. Hallelujah. God can open doors, but he's only going to open the door that you prepare for. He's only going to open the door that you commit to walking through. 
There's no sense of God opening the door if we're not going to walk through the door. There's no sense of him making a way if we're too fearful to, to, you know, to, to make the change. I had to change. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a teacher of the gospel. I've, I've, I've taught the word of God since I was 19 years old. I did my first sermon at 19. But I had to get, I had to get a, a consciousness of wealth. I had to understand what God was saying when it came to, to his word. I was so religious. I, I'm telling you, I think I put the R in religion. I was so prophetic. I was so living in the future. I always regretted my, my today. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. I, I live so in, in the prophetic and in, and in the future. I never allow myself to enjoy today. <laughs> I'm crying at 16, waiting to be 30. And then when I get 30, I'm waiting to be 50. Now that I'm 50, 55 actually this year, I'm smarter. <laughs> I'm enjoying every day. I love living every day. I'm learning every day. I'm, I'm, I feel younger. I feel excited. Why? Because I'm not worried about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Again, Lord, these are your daughters. These are, these are your daughters. And Lord, you bless me to be able to teach your daughters and to have, for them to have courage to be a financially savvy woman. I thank you, Lord God, that, that we start with money because money is just so prevalent today. Money is just so, it's, it's such a, a, a conversation piece. Money is just something that we, um, we're, we're still really trying to get a handle on understanding. That's why I don't mind the challenge of it. Sometimes it's easier for us to get healed than it is for us to pay our bills. Sometimes it's easier, it's easier for us to, you know, to, to raise the dead almost, Lord, than, than to be able to believe that we can be debt free. So, God, I don't mind, you know, being, being, the, being the pioneer, if you will, of, of, um, of, of, of black women in money and black women in power and, 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 and black women in career and, 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 and business opportunity as a Christian. There's plenty of women out there, Lord God, that 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 have it better than me, and that that um, that know more, and and um, so I'm not the only one. I'm not that vain to think that. But Lord, I thank you that that I can be among these powerful women and be able to share with like minds, like Black women in power. These women that are here, that 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 are faithful and that listen. Hallelujah! Bless their life, oh God. Every need met in Jesus' name. Every, every need met, I call it. Every need met. Let them have faith like they've never had before, oh God. Let, let, them, let, them, let, them, let them ask big questions. Let them ask. Hallelujah. Let them, let them know that you're the door that they can walk through. Let them understand, oh God, that there's nothing impossible to him or to her that will believe. I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Good night, good night. We'll make sure there's no questions before we let you go. You guys are awesome, awesome, wonderful. Thank you, BWE. Thank you, Dr. King. Thank you, my all my minister sisters. <laughs> thank you, guys. Absolutely enjoy your evening. Good night, good night. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. Ha, ha, ha.